Thank you. So uh, I'd first like to acknowledge my co-authors on this paper, Nikita Chuganov and uh, Georges Mushi. This is work that dates back to uh, when I was working at Schlumberger for the last few years. I'm uh, now at Lawrence Livermore National Lab. You can reach me at uh, the email address I have up there. Um, although I won't be talking about it today, for those who are interested, the group I manage there has a open source 3D hydraulic fracture simulator that uh, people can download and evaluate for their own purposes. But today I'll be talking about uh, propent placement. Um, so we've seen quite a few presentations that have touched on propent placement from various, or propent from various directions. Here I'll be talking and focusing upon how propent is placed within a fracture at the field scale. And in particular, focusing on uh, a technology that many of you probably haven't even heard of. It's a concept called heterogeneous propent placement. And uh, the traditional wisdom, if you will, for placing propent within a fracture was that we should attempt to place it as homogeneously as possible, as is shown on the bottom left of this figure here. And the goal was to maintain aperture. But as you might imagine, a consequence of having a uniform distribution of propent is that you now have a solid pack of granular material that you have to produce fluids back through. And so at Schlumberger uh, and elsewhere in the industry, concepts have been developed to try to induce a heterogeneous or patchy distribution of propent within the fractures with the goal of having open channels between them through which you can produce the fluids much more effe uh, efficiently. Um, and highway is just one example where uh, at the surface there is a, a pulsation of um, propent introduced at the wellhead. So you have a period, we call it a, a dirty slug, where sand is included and then a clean slug of fluid. And ideally these will, in the case of a vertical well, is what I'm showing you here, uh, these slugs will propagate down, emerge from various perforated intervals and create nice islands of propent within the fracture. And then under closure stress, ideally, these channels would remain open. So um, you, this is, of course, the conceptual picture. We really, in research at Schlumberger, wanted to try to understand this in more detail. And what we were working off of was that uh, the design of the technology had really been inspired by some lab scale tests. And then there'd been this jump to the field. Um, here, I'm showing uh, some results from the lab in uh, Novosibirsk. Uh, this is a, um, an experiment that was intended to represent a uh, vertical fracture geometry with a vertical well. And in this kind of geometry, you end up with, uh, you, they were able to demonstrate in the lab that they could in, induce, inject pillars of propent at the left edge and propagate them laterally through this transparent model fracture, basically a Healy Shaw cell. Similarly, um, they attempted lab scale testing that were representative of horizontal wells intersecting vertical fractures, like you might see in unconventional wells in North America. And here, as you might expect, they got a more of a concentric ring of propent uh, forming around the well as the fluids propagate out into the fracture. So, I mean, this gave us some confidence that we could create uh, various ge geometric patterns um, within fractures. But it didn't really take us to field scale. And as I'll show you shortly, there are a number of great uncertainties around uh, understanding things at the field scale. And so we wanted to develop a really f a first principles kind of approach to predicting the performance of these sorts of systems. And uh, with a view to understanding the differences between the different well geometries that we might encounter, formation properties, and then looking to the future, uh, what if we could understand how to design a heterogeneous propent placement scheme from first principles, that would allow us, or, or to predict its performance, it would allow us to really anticipate what the next generation of technology should look like. So to address this, we uh, put together a workflow to predict the conductivity achievable from uh, a heterogeneous propent placement scheme. And it worked by stitching together a number of pieces, which I have in this flow chart at the top here, that I'll just briefly touch upon. Uh, the first phase of the workflow has to do with predicting the, the, um, the place geometry of the pillars of propent within the fracture. For the parameter study that we considered, we focused on a vertical well geometry, but as you'll see later, the end member cases of this study actually um, mimic a, a horizontal well intersecting a vertical fracture as well. And the key parameters here when it comes to injection are the spacing between the injection points, 
Uh, in red here, I'm highlighting the predicted location of the pillars that are produced. Um, you'll see that they develop a characteristic crescent shape. This is because in the near wellbore region, we have radial flow that transitions to a more linear flow as you get away from the wellbore. And we varied the spacing of these injection points, the um, period of the dirty and clean slugs, and so on. Now, that was talking about you know, how to predict the geometry of the propent pillars within the fracture. There are a number of own unknown uh, magnitude uh, processes that influence the degree of mixing between the clean and dirty slugs. And these depend upon the precise heterogeneous problem placement technology that's being used. In the case of highway, for example, the uh, uh, heterogeneity is induced at the wellhead through oscillation, but you could also imagine downhole technologies that might be used. And the degree of mixing, intermingling between the fluids depends upon which technology is used. Uh, but in the case of highway, we expect that there will be intermingling of the clean and dirty slugs due to mixing within the well bore. There will be some mixing that occurs within the fracture itself. And then there's also a finite time it takes to switch on and off the propent as it's injected. Given that there are a number of uncertainties here uh, that were difficult to quantify ahead of time, we decided to treat the degree of mixing as a um, a step that was applied after placement, although physically, of course, it happens before. We, by doing this, it allows us to treat it as a lumped parameter. So, for example, given this pristine geometry of propent on the left here, through the application of characteristic uh, diffusion length, we obtain the final diffuse geometry of the placed propent. And the thing you'll see on this slide and, and later slides is that due to mixing, we have this inner core that's a deeper red, which has is densely packed propent, and around that you have more tenuous regions of propent in the, um, towards the cooler colors where we have no propent at all. So after looking at the placement and mixing of the propent, we wanted to understand what happens within the fracture as the formation uh, closes on the fracture, containing the heterogeneous distribution of propent. And for this, uh, I utilized a, um, an asperity-based model that dates back to some work I did at Purdue University many years ago as a postdoc. Um, and the approach basically allows us to, you know, given a distribution of materials within a fracture, and this is of course in the plane of the fracture that we're looking at here, predict how the aperture closes under increasing stress. So we move from hotter colors to cooler colors as the aperture closes. And this model includes the deformation of the propent, the deformation of the fracture walls around the propent pillars, and uh, also the nonlinear effect due to any contact that is made within these channels. All of this is very important for us to understand whether these channels are indeed viable under high stress. And uh, another key thing that we realized as we were embarking on this parameter study is that when you consider this distribution of propent that I'm showing you here that has some diffuse nature to it, you can imagine that um, as the formation closes on the fracture, and, and starts holding the propent in place, some of the propent material in here, remember it's just a granular material, it may not be carrying any stress. And as a result, due to gravitational and flowback effects, it will get cleaned out. And so what we realized was that there's this strong interplay between the degree of mixing between the clean and dirty slugs and the, and the diffusion of these pillars and the stress. So at low stress, for example, you might imagine that only the inner core of each of these propent pillars is held in place and we have wide open channels and a very conductive fracture. In contrast, as we increase the stress, the more diffuse regions will be held in place and the channels will narrow even to the point where we no longer have open channels if we're looking at flow from right to left back to the wellbore. So we see this interplay between the closure stress and the d degree of mixing between the, uh, different, uh, between the propent and the clean fluid. Using this workflow, we performed an extensive parameter study intended to span a wide range of pumping and formation related uh, properties uh, that I, I show here. Um, just in general, there were a number of uh, pumping related, uh, the, this is the range of pumping related parameters that were considered. Uh, there was the formation related properties that were um, investigated and the elastic properties of the propent itself under stress. Uh, the key thing I'll point out here is that because of that mixing, uh, the uncertainty around mixing, we al allowed ourselves to consider a very wide range of mixing length within the, uh, between the dirty and clean slugs. Uh, one millimeter, which is essentially going to give you nice crisp pillars of propent uh, all the way up to a foot almost. 
and we considered a wide range of closure stresses. And uh, by varying you know, the, the spacing between the injection points and um, the timing of the uh, oscillation between the clean and dirty slugs, we found that we actually captured uh, a range of geometries of prop and placement that were representative of both vertical and horizontal well configurations. So on the left, for example, I'm showing the geometry our model produces in the limit as we have increased you know, large spacing between the injection points, and you tend to get much more of this concentric circle kind of arrangement of the uh, propant, reminiscent of the lab scale testing that we saw in Novosibirsk, and uh, for the horizontal well intersecting a, a vertical fracture. On the right, I'm showing a different limit uh, within the parameter study considered where we obtain propant geometry that's much more reminiscent of the isolated uh, pillars propagating linearly into the fracture, uh, reminiscent of the vertical well geometry intersecting a vertical fracture. So with this slide, I'll just briefly walk you through a typical result obtained uh, from one of the simulations that we performed that highlights, again, that interplay between stress and mixing uh, during closure of the fracture. So uh, prior to closure of the fracture, this is the, for this particular set of parameters, this is the distribution of propant that was predicted. Again, the, the deeper red colors here are the most dense uh, portions of propant within the fracture, and these other colors represent the more tenuous, uh, more loosely packed propant. And so at, at very low stress, um, only the inner, core, well, the inner core of these propant pillars is held in place, and so I'm showing over here the predicted uh, geometry of the contact that's made between the propant and the fracture walls, and these regions in here represent open channels, and if we look at the flux uh, back towards the well, which is on the left, um, we get a, a lot of flow through these open channels. And we would call this um, you know, channel, channelized flow, and really, this is the goal of technologies such as highways, to live in this kind of zone here. But you can see, as we increase the stress level for this particular scenario and more propant is held in place, these channels get bridged off with propant. And now uh, you see a lot more flux going around these pillars and trying to make its way through these narrow bridged regions. And overall, our uh, performance in terms of conductivity has dropped by you know, orders of magnitude, but it's still now in the zone of what you would typically get from a conventional prop and placement technology. Now, this, of course, is not why Highway, for example, was originally developed. However, if you can achieve this with Highway, it's still a win because you're using half as much prop and typically, and even less fluid overall in practice. And so you could argue that this, from an economic and environmental standpoint, is still a win. What you want to avoid, of course, is as if you're dealing with even higher closure stresses, that'll take you into a zone where the channels themselves are closed off and you don't have any effective flow back to the well bore, essentially a failed job. So, uh, of course, we performed over 2,000 simulations, as I mentioned, spanning this parameter space, and we've uh, published quite a bit on various analyses of it using global sensitivity analysis, but today I'll just focus on the horizontal well versus vertical well um, snapshots uh, of the statistical distribution in terms of performance. What I'm showing here for the horizontal well geometry and the vertical well geometry is a comparison of the different contributions to the uncertainty in performance from the different input parameters. And the take home here is that for the horizontal well geometry, we're basically, uh, we have an uncertainty in performance that's domin dominated entirely over the stress range considered by that un certain mixing length. Um, and so this basically points to the direction that we really need to drill down more and understand better the, the uncertainty in that mixing and, and in order to really optimize the technology. Interestingly enough, when it comes to the vertical well geometry, uh, although at low stresses that mixing length plays a role, generally speaking, it's uh, properties that control the geometry of the fracture and, and its aperture, like the uh, Young's modulus of the formation and the initial aperture of the fracture that control performance. So in conclusion then, we were able to develop um, a state-of-the-art tool that could allow us for the first time to really predict and understand the factors that influence the performance of heterogeneous propant placement, which is an emerging technology to improve uh, conductivity of fractures. Um, and we were able to uh, 
with this tool, conceivably evaluate the performance of hypothetical heterogeneous problem placement technologies. Uh, but the key part of the study I presented today was to try to understand how um, the uncertainty in the subsurface could be affecting vertical well and horizontal wells differently. And if you want any further information on this, feel free to contact me, and I'd be happy to field some questions. Uh, we have time for a quick question. Yes. Has the technology been deployed in the field? Highway? Highway um, is, I think, Schlumberger's best performing, like most profitable uh, technology f based upon first year sales. It was deployed uh, commercially a couple of years ago. It, it got picked up very rapidly in the field for a number of reasons I touched upon, not just the conductivity of the fractures, but the fact that you actually use less propent. And it really pointed the way to how we should be evaluating how things like this could be used to actually reduce environmental footprint, not just produce you know, more conductive fractures. Thanks. Thank you.